buffer tubes, triggers, rails, barrels, bolt carrier groups. There's so many things out there that are mil spec, but is mil spec actually superior to commercial stuff? The A2 grip definitely isn't. Let's talk about mil spec. Welcome back everybody, Clint here today with Classic Firearms, here to discuss mil spec. What is mil spec? And we're going to talk about that here in just a moment because, uh, well, it has a little bit to do with NATO, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, which, by the way, if you haven't been watching the news, things are kind of spicy right now, uh, this late in February 2022. But uh, let's just say things are interesting, involving the NATO Alliance, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, uh, as I mentioned, with a country a little bit further north north and very large. Uh, but anyway, NATO became a thing in the late 40s, shortly after World War II. Uh, a bunch of countries got together in hopes to maybe prevent a, <laughs> another world war. See where that's going. But uh, anyway, so with that, there has been a lot of talk about standardization, uh, making things all kind of one specification to keep things kind of the same. And you start to see that quite a bit with the adoption of the M16, the 5.56 NATO cartridge, you got the 7.62 NATO cartridge, things like that that just became very popular cartridges, ammunition, firearms even, to use all throughout the world that belong to NATO countries. So where does this play with Mil spec. Well, here in the United States, uh, we know mil spec. A lot of us, when we hear that term, is like, oh, well, if it's good enough for the military, it's good enough for me. Just hold that thought, though, because mil spec really actually comes down to a lot of people think buffer tube. <laughs> a buffer tube is something that really comes to mind whenever you think about mil spec because those are actually two of the things that kind of affect people the most. Why? Because typically when somebody buys a brand new AR, what they want to do is start accessorizing it. Kind of like this with my M4A1 here. To start throwing a whole bunch of crap on it that you'll probably never use and absolutely love to look at. And that's completely fine. It's your gun, do what you want to do. But right back here on the buffer tube, you'll notice that we have two different styles. You've got a commercial tube and a mil spec tube. The mil spec tube is actually a little bit smaller diameter. You would think military would be bigger, beefier. Well, one thing I've learned about being in the military myself is if you can cut costs somewhere, you will. But somehow you'll go over budget every time. Uh, but anyway, so with this here, if you can actually reduce the materials and still have the strength, reduce the materials, but use at least a quality material, then you'll be all set. And that's exactly what they do with the buffer tube. It has to be a certain material, has to meet certain specifications, certain testing, and that doesn't go just for the buffer tube. It goes for the whole gun. But the part that I think really gets people the most is this part. And that's because, like I said, people will get a hold of their gun for the first time, want to throw a cool stock on it because they want to take off the boring little M4 stock, but they don't realize they have a commercial tube. Then they go to get a mil spec stock. It doesn't fit. You just beat the crap out of it anyway. And now it's a fixed stock that's never coming off. Don't do that unless you really just don't care. Uh, but ultimately, you have mil spec stocks that will fit mil spec tubes. Then you have commercial. <laughs> Uh, tubes that will only fit a commercial stock. Now you can turn it around a little bit and you can fit uh, commercial stocks onto mil spec tubes, but you're going to have a lot of play there. It's going to be a very loose tolerance and it's not going to be the most comfortable or ergonomic thing to shoot, uh, especially if you're actually trying to get like accurate shots off with the stock wobbling all over you. It's not a good time. So, and it's not to say that one's really better over than the other, uh, especially for a lot of the practices that most people use in their daily lives. And again, this is really just coming down to the buffer tube. So there's a lot that really goes into it. Like I said before, you're trying to get, at least the United States, is trying to get the best cost while not sacrificing the quality, the materials used, and so on and so forth. They wanna make sure that, let's just say, if you had a gun go down on you, but you've got spare parts laying around from the same gun, you wanna make sure that all those parts can fit into the gun to get it running again. If you don't have a specification across the board, well, you might have some issues. And you see that a little bit too within the AR-10 game. The AR-15, thankfully there is a mil specification, a military standard, so that way, oh, hey, I can use this upper, this lower, and it's typically gonna work just fine. 
Well, with the AR-10, if you don't have a certain type of upper that matches your lower, and of course I'm talking about like the DPMS, DPMS style versus the Armalite style, one is a curved upper and a curved lower that matches into place versus one being a little bit more angled. If you confuse the two and you buy a DPMS lower, thinking that you can just take your Armalite upper and throw them together, it won't work. However, if I wanted to take this upper off of this AR-15, the M4A1 by Dana Defense, and throw it onto, well, this Colt, well, it's easy enough to do that. And they're two different manufacturers that, well, they make quality stuff, they work, so why the heck not if you wanna change it up? And that's something too that the military actually likes quite a bit is the modularity and versatility of these firearms. And that's something too where we've seen uh, throughout well, history, especially with the AR-15, if you want to change up your firearm for what the mission might entail, it's easy enough to do that by saying, well, I've got one lower that's full auto, semi-auto, three round burst, whatever it might be. Well, I can switch my upper to go a little bit shorter. Maybe I can throw a 14.5, a 10.3. Maybe I want it to run more as a DMR. I could throw like maybe an 18 incher on it, whatever it might be, and it's easy enough to do. I just had to remember really quick. I was like, that muzzle device is pinned and weld, right? So, but it is, so it is a 16 inch, but boom. Now I've got my M4A1 upper on my fixed stock Colt lower and well, that's easy enough to do and it'll run just fine. Now, a few of you might be wondering too, just a really quick caveat. Why did I take a quick second to remember if this muzzle device was pinned and weld? This barrel length is actually 14 and a half inches, which is kind of a military standard, 14 and a half inch government profile barrel. Cool, one and seven twist, awesome. If I was truly operating a military firearm, the muzzle device being fixed in place wouldn't matter. Shouldn't matter, but here we are. But because it is fixed in place, that actually gets you the minimum length required to be considered a rifle, which is 16 inches. If that was not pinned and welded in place and it's at 14.5, that does not meet the minimum length to be considered a rifle, but yet a short barreled rifle. And if I were to take that upper and put it on this lower, which is not registered as a short barreled rifle, then I just created a felony and an illegal firearm. Does it seem ridiculous? Yes, that's because it absolutely is. But no, we're not doing anything uh, illegal here. So with that being said though, look, you can take your rifle because of that, again, military specification, things always kind of being the same, you can take your rifles, switch out components and parts, and they're gonna run just fine. Granted, if you need to actually switch out a component because you're running like maybe a suppressor, or a brake of some sort, something or whatever else, and you want it to be a little bit less recoiling, then sure, then you can start playing with different buffer weights and stuff like that. But military standard, H buffer, standard buffer, it runs, it works great. Not much more I can really say about that. Of course, uh, so we've talked about the buffer tube, uh, the different types of barrels that they have as well. We've actually done an entire barrel or an entire video covering all sorts of barrels, Matt and myself, which is pretty fun. Uh, but ultimately, is military specification the best? And quite simply, the answer to that is no. What's cool about military specification is it does set at least a standard. No spec mags. Well, you know, metal GI mags, we all know that they actually work pretty good. Uh, Magpul, however, is what's called a cage, uh, or like you're, they are a government, a commercial and government entity. So you'll notice that on a lot of their magazines, uh, not this one, because this is only a Gen 2, but that should have their cage code on it somewhere. Cage 1LX60, that just means that they do provide materials or accessories or something to the United States military. You'll, you'll see it on like the Surefire, Surefire mags, the OK Industries, stuff like that, because those were the standard before the PMAG got adopted, which is pretty cool. You also see it, let's say like uh, with the Styrog. The Styrog used to have its own proprietary magazine. Now you have the standard mag, the Stanag, if you will, and that's what you can have now in the newer models. Uh, they'll take regular AR magazines, so your PMAG, stuff like that. Uh, but anyway, getting off topic, military standard is cool. Is it the best? It depends on your 
Depends on your use. I don't think it's honestly the best. A lot of you guys are gonna be out there doing competitive shooting. You just wanna have a rifle for sport, whatever it might be. Then honestly, you don't need to have some sort of government contracted company making your gun for you. You can go out there and find plenty of other firearms that do, well, a very good job, if not better in some instances. You've got a lot of manufacturers out there that actually wanna take the time and do better than just the military standard. Remember, a lot of companies that are military standard are providing you a, sure, a reliable and quality product, but the cost is typically the big thing that's keeping them back. Commercial market, if people are willing to pay for it, they will. So, look at it that way. But with that being said, I hope this has answered some of y'all's question, is mil-spec the way to go? If you want something just to be completely standard, you wanna have all the options for accessories and stuff, sure, go that way. Doesn't mean that it's any better than commercial in some senses. But I'll leave it off there. Uh, the really big reason we've talked about this today is not just because of NATO and all the things happening in the world uh, right now, but because we've got one heck of a popular military firearm that we're currently giving away, the Barrett M82. The Barrett M82A1 semi-auto 50 BMG box-fed 10-round rifle is fantastic. And Katie and I just got done doing a video about like the top movies featuring the Barrett M82. Pretty cool. Uh, every last one of them had something that was either incorrect or whatever else, but it's Hollywood. What are you going to do about it? It's still fun and entertaining to watch uh, and, you know, make believe at the end of the day. But... This is our current giveaway, and we figured since it's a pretty big giveaway, well, that's because we hit a pretty big milestone. We hit 1 million subscribers on YouTube, so again, thank you guys. We wouldn't be here. This would not be possible without all of you, so thank you so much. And utilize the code word 1M for a couple hundred extra entries on the Barrett M82 with the Vortex Viper PST 5-25 first focal plane optic and the Scalarworks mount. Very awesome setup, whole lot of fun to mag dump. Absolutely recommend it. Don't miss out on this way. Refer your friends and family. And if you haven't gotten subscribed yet, get subscribed. We're putting out a video every single day. Hopefully you guys are still enjoying the content. What other type of stuff would you like to see us cover? Uh, would you like to see more of an in-depth review at the range comparing maybe a commercial versus mil spec or this versus that, or maybe you just want a different, I, I don't know. Throw out your video ideas down below. I'm just curious to read them. I know quite a few of them we are not going to do because you guys are all weird. But anyway, I'll leave it off there. As always, we appreciate your business. God bless. We'll see you guys next time at ClassicFarms.com.